Sometimes when I run, words of affirmation pour through my mind like a cascading river teeming down a mountainside and I'm convinced I could run forever. But eventually and inevitably they begin to dry up as the miles pile up and the further and longer I run, what's left is only a dwindling stream of self-doubt, self-pity, and negativity. But I've learned that in the struggle between my body and spirit, in the battlefield of my mind, my spirit will always win if it can just yell loud enough these three words. Take another step. And more often than not, that's usually when I remember and reflect upon the other three words that change the direction of my life and why run so far in the first place. You have cancer. I can still recall every little detail about that moment, sitting in the doctor's office, hearing them first ring out in the still air, from the inflection in his voice to the direction of his gaze, the reverberation off the walls was like a suggestion it may echo for the rest of my life. But that's where time froze, so I have absolutely no recollection of what he said next. My mind had blacked out everything else. All I could hear, repeating like a skipping record, were those three words. And yet they're just words. We say and hear thousands of them every day. So maybe it's not necessarily the words themselves, rather how we analyze, rationalize, internalize, and translate them that gives them their power. Besides, they say actions speak louder than words, right? But what about those words that are so loud they'll bring you to your knees even if spoken out a whisper? Or the loudest ones of all, they don't even make a sound. The words we tell ourselves ultimately determine the actions we take or don't take in this world. And for most of my existence, there'd been a difference between what I'd tell myself and what I'd actually do. It was a disconnect rooted in fear because I was afraid of being perceived as being afraid. So I wore my ego like a mask, lest anyone ask something compassionate like, are you all right? Or how do you feel? Then I could conceal the words hiding below the surface. And my mask was the size of a boat, a ship colossal in size perched arrogantly afloat upon an ocean of everything is fine, unyielding and unsinkable. Though history has taught us that unsinkable doesn't exist, a breach tall can send even the biggest boat spiraling into the abyss. But it's there, as hardship drags us deeper into the depths of our own misery and darkness, with the skeletons of all the fear and regret we've tried to bury, reaching up from their graves to grab hold of our feet defying us to take a single step. It's there we'll discover the most vulnerable and honest version of ourselves we've ever known. It's there we'll discover our real voice, one that'll be clearer and embody more strength than anything we've ever shown. And I know this now because I've been to that place, where those facades come crashing down all around. And I found that when you finally hit rock bottom, it's the place so deep you have to look up to see ground. What I found is a beautiful truth, you see, Fear will hold you down, but it's courage that'll set you free. And being strong doesn't mean not falling, it's how you rise from that adversity. And the climate of the dark can only start after we let go of all the things we think we aren't. So for those convinced actions speak louder than words, it's because you've said it to yourself so many times you now believe it. That's the power of words. They are and always will be the catalyst for the actions that matter the most. And if a picture is worth a thousand of them, isn't it also true that just a few words could paint a thousand pictures, or tell a hundred stories, or change a single life? If you find yourself in a position where you have to listen to the kind of words that feel like they pull the world from beneath you, whatever they tell you, whether it's you have cancer or worse, you don't have to answer with your mask held high as if to defy the fact that you're vulnerable, because it's still going to shatter into a million tiny pieces. So just let it down. Let it down and listen. Not just to the words around you, but listen to the ones within. Because in the battlefield of your mind, you'll find your spirit is there yelling too. And I promise, if you listen closely, you'll hear it saying, take another step.